Welcome to the Azeroth Times, the podcast where I tell you what I find in game and what's going on. Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about Malay DPS and Shadowlands and how to play it. But first, I want to tell you, of course, everybody knows that when Shadowlands is coming out now, it's been released. And that is November 23rd. So, but uh, I'm going to say that there's been a multi-boxing people thinking they're getting banned. No, they're not getting banned. The uh, third-party software being used to run multiple accounts at once, sending keystrokes, you know, through the software to Blizzard, that's getting banned. And uh, you can get banned for... Uh, using any type of third-party software to multi-box. You have to manually you uh, play each one. And then Matt Villers has been promoted to lead encounter designer for World of Warcraft. And there's all sorts of guides out like uh, the Forge Your Own legendary items and stuff like that. Now this is uh, some guides you can look at wh while you're, you know, messing around. But I'm probably not going to get into some of that uh, today. I, like I said, I'm going to do Malay and how to play it in Shadowlands. Now, so you're if you play a Death Knight, you're probably wondering how Frost Death Knight plays in Shadowlands. Now, is it? It's a proc based spec with a kit of three spells: Obliterate, Howling Blast, and Frost Strike. Now, Obliterate deals direct damages and spends the, your rune resources. And it also absorbs procs of Killing Machine, which guarantees a critical strike. We, they have a total of 6 runes that generate over 10 seconds, decreasing with haste once we spend them. Now, uh, they can generate 3 runes at any given time, so it's important to always keep 3 on cooldown to maximize the, the recharge. Now, the runes you spend generate runic power, which you can also then spend on Frost Strike. And uh, once you gain the procs of Rhyme from using the obliter Obliterate, they are used on Howling Blast, which also applies your dot uh, Frost Fever. And now in the pre-patch, you have the ability to use both one-handed and two-handed weapons. And they can go for the fast hitting dual wield option that allows them to utilize two of their special weapon enchants from their rune forge. They can also choose a heavy hitting two heavy handed weapon that greatly boosts their obliterate damage through Might of the Frozen Waste. And Might of the Frozen Waste is while du dual wielding your obliterate and frost strike, also strike with your offhand. And each weapon can be engraved with a rune forge enchant. But wielding a two-handed weapon increases obliterate damage by 30% and increases the chance for your auto attack critical strikes to grant killing machine. Now the the Frost Death Knight is the master of death, magic, and frost, and they can control undead minions through control undead, raise fallen allies with raise ally and summon the dead to do their bidding with raised dead. They're the masters of magical defense, both negating magical debuffs and absorbing magical damage through anti-magic shell and anti-magic zone. The uh, anti-magic zone boosts their ability to, by providing great magical defense zones for their allies. And then finally, the they can control the power of the undead frost dragons, expelling their frosty breath with Breath of Cindergosa, or calling them to rain havoc on the battlefield with Frostworm's Fury and Frostwelp's Indignation. And now there's a large number of different builds. You can go for the Bursty Clevy build, relying heavily on Breath of Cindergosa, a consistent and fast paced Ice Cap build. Or one focusing on big obliterate damage through obliteration. And now, 
Unholy Death Knight. Now, they are the master of undead pets and deadly diseases. They utilize a core rotation of Festering Strike, Scoured Strike, Death Coil, and Outbreak. Now, Festering Strike costs two runes and applies two to three Festering Wounds. Runes are, you know, their primary resource again. We, they have a total of six regenerate over ten seconds, decreasing with haste, once used. A maximum of three can generate at any given time. Fester Wu is a secondary resource, acting as a debuff on any target they fight, and Scared Strike spends these Festering Runes by popping them on the target, dealing damage. Spending Runes generates their third resource, Runic Power, which they can spend on Death Coil, and finally Outbreak is used to keep the dot Virulent Plague. Now they wield a great two-handed weapon that they can chant with their powerful rune forges. They excel in AoE scaling, reaching places other classes can only dream of. They have been nerfed in this regard in the Shadowlands pre-patch, but the potential is definitely still there. They also do well for short single target burst, given that they have a powerful army of the dead is ready. Now the Unholy Death Knight is also the master of death, magic defense, and shadow. They can control undead minions through control of dead, raise follow allies with raise ally, and uh, summon hordes of the dead to do their bidding with raise and dead, apocalypse, summon gargoyle, and army of the dead. They are masters of magical defense, both negating magical debuffs, absorbing magical damage through anti-magic shell, and providing great magical defense zones for their allies with anti-magic zone. And then they can uh, infect their enemies with the shadowy diseases, virulent plague, and unholy blight, and they infect their open wounds with festering wounds. Then we'll move on to Havoc Demon Hunter. Now Havoc is a simple spec. Their talent offer a variety of playstyles for all types of players, ranging from the standard melee spec of build and spending resources to a talent build utilizing their extreme mobility to buff their damage. Now their core tool kit involves abilities like I-Beam, Immolation Aura, Chaos Strike, Fell Rush, and Blade Dance, and also make use of Fell Rush as an important damaging ability. Now, their weapon skills allows them to wield two fast melee weapons, which fits our, their fast-paced nature perfectly. Now, Havoc excels at burst AoE melee cleave, and their single target damage is also decent. And now, Barrel Druids is a mobile DPS spec with a damage profile oriented around finishers and maintaining bleeds. Kind of like the rogues. Now the spec is oriented around shape shifting and there's a multitude of collectible forms for the spec accessible from the barbershop. So if you're a Feldred, you should go check out the barbershop and see all the multiple forms you can use. Now anyone who's played Feral Druid over the last decade will remain broadly familiar with how to, pl the, to play the spec going into Shadowlands. Now, the spec continues to play similarly to Battle for Azeroth, maintaining bleeds, rip, and rake, and filling other finishers with ferocious bite. Now, since it's more or less the same, I'm going to move on to Survival Hunter. Now, they're a brutal melee combatant, abandoning its ranged weapons for close combat, preparing to face their enemy eye to eye. Survival revolves around the core rotation of Serpent Sting, Kill Command, Raptor Strike, and Wildfire Bomb. The core gameplay is to generate focus will kill command to make sure you maintain Serpent Sting and spend excess on Raptor Strike, which uh, can get a bit more complex when using some of the talent combinations, but generally doesn't add an extra button to your rotation. Now, Survival has unique mastery in that it not only does it increase your damage, but also increases your survival with consistent passive healing. However, it is important to remember that while survival 
also heavily depends on pets like Beast Mastery, it is still unable to tame exotic pets. Furthermore, you can only use your aspect of the turtle to immune dangerous abilities or feign death to make enemies lose interest in you. Now, like other hunters, you'll be able to put down Tar Trap to slow down enemies in an area, dispel enraged with tranquilizing shot, or use your pet via Eyes of the Beast to creatively pull some mobs. Now, Windwalker Monk. Now, they use two forms of resources, Chi and Energy. Now, energy builds up over time, and you spend it using abilities such as Tiger Palm, which will also grant you Chi, which in turn you can use other abilities such as Fists of Fury. The spec generally functions around balancing these resources in order to get the most possible uses out of the several abilities with cooldowns like Fists of Fury and Rising Sun Kick. Now, they also have fantastic mobility with spells like Roll, Flying Serpent Kick, and Tiger's Lust. One of the most favorable melee AoE specs, Windwalker's Combo, Storm, Earth, and Fire, Fists of Fury, and Spitting Crane Kick to be generally one of the stronger specs in AoE and Mythic Plus. It also has many tools to be a very powerful spec in PvP like Ring of Peace. Now, even though they lack uh, an immunity, it does have several defensive abilities in Touch of Karma and Fortifying Brew. They uh, generate struggle with single target damage, such as what is prevalent in most raid encounters. And now, Ret Paladins. Now, they are Holy Crusaders that use two-handed weapons to turn the power to light into powerful damaging abilities to bring justice and vengeance to their enemies. Now, they still do have a couple of abilities that they can cast from range, also. The core of the rotation is centered around using abilities like Blade of Justice and Judgment to generate holy power which is consumed to deal devastating damage with abilities like Templar's Verdict or Divine Storm. Although Paladin's mobility options are somewhat limited, they have access to a large array of buffs for yourself and your party to help them throughout a fight as well as strong healing capabilities for its role. Now, Assassination Rogues. Like any rogue spec, Assassination uses energy to attack targets. Now, these attacks can usually be classified as either a builder that generates combo points or a finisher that consumes these combo points for a more powerful strike. Now, they also, there are more bleed and poison centric spec that relies on doing a noticeable amount of damage over time, or not. It's also the easiest rogue spec to get into as a new player since the mechanics are the easiest to understand and the pacing is slow that than that of the other specs. And now, Outlaw Rogues, they also use energy to attack targets. And they can be usually classified as either builders uh, that generates combo points or finish that it consumes them, just like the other one. But Outlaw is a very fast paced spec where you hit a lot of buttons for direct damage. It has the iconic blade flurry mechanic Allowing you to do AoE damage by continuing with your standard rotation instead of relying on AoE specific abilities and rotations. Now, as often seen as a somewhat deterring aspect of the spec is Roll of the Bones, which is not very transparent to newcomers and adds some variance to how it performs. And now, suddenly, Rogue. Now, they also do the Energy Builder, Finisher, blah, 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 that I was about the last two. Now, the Subly Rogues, in particular, they love doing damage with Finishers. They excel at doing focused damage to their main target and are able to use Finishers more often in multiple target situations. Now, a specialty of Subly gameplay is that it resolve, revolves around short cooldown windows with symbols of death and shadow dance. You will often find yourself in these windows that give access to abilities that require stealth. While this does not mean have to mean sub 
is a heavy burst damage spec. It certainly has a well-paced bursty gameplay feeling to it. And now to one of my favorites, Enhancement Shaman. Now, just to be warned, this is probably one of the largest spec reworks in Shadowlands, so expect a hard transition, but the rewards are kind of worth it. Now, the first most noticeable charge you will see when you log in during the pre-patch will be the removal of Maelstrom as a resource. This has been replaced by Maelstrom Weapon. A returning mechanic from the Wrath of Lich King to Warlords of Draenor expansions that orients enhancement more than more around a battle mage style by weaving melee strikes with spells. Shocks also return and form the core spell portion of the spec, paired alongside the old classic strikes Storm Strike and Lava Lash, instead of being defined as a resource, abilities are mostly limited by cooldowns. Now we could say that it kind of lands somewhere between a rework and a revert, mixing the old Warlord's systems of cooldown management with the Stormbringer Maelstrom weapon, proc reactions, and Crash Lightning AoE funnel components. The way the rotation is navigated now largely revolves around a constant juggling of different cooldowns to try and offset them from each other and avoid clashes to reduce downtime as much as possible all while using Maelstrom Weapon as a mix-up to fill space when clashes inevitably do occur. Arms Warrior Arms Warriors they're, have a relatively slow playstyle which is punctuated by short periods of burst damage during Colossus Smash. Now this largely revolves around resource management as care must be taken to ensure that Rage is spent at the right time and place, as becoming Rage starved by too many fillers means that higher priority attacks cannot be used. Now, while the base toolkit is not over overly expansive, the Essence and Azerite bonuses available during the Shadowlands pre-patch make it much more engaging, adding additional resources with which to fill extra GCDs, and placing great emphasis on spending as many resources as possible during Colossus Smash in order to build powerful follows on buffs. Because nearly every ability is a resource spender, Arms Warriors always thinks a few steps ahead, even if not filling every single global cooldown available. And finally, Fury Warrior. Now, they have a faster pace play spot style, which focuses on sustained damage rather than spikes of big bursts. With only one rage spending ability, the goal of the rotation is simple, generating enough rage to cast Rampage and maintain in rage, although a multitude of different abilities will be used along the way. Because every other ability is a resource generator and has a short or no cooldown, Fury Warriors are always active without any downtime spent waiting for something to do. This makes it highly engaging proves that specialization doesn't need to be complicated in order to be fun. Alright, well that's it for this week. Stay tuned for next week. And hopefully I'll have some interesting stuff for you next week. Alright, have fun playing the game. This show is brought to you by Heartland Production Entertainment. If you'd like to help to make the show better, go to patreon.com slash heartlandpae.